Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, uh, we got some news in today. We have Carnival clarifying their priority boarding as some people were reporting, hey, I'm being sent to the back of the line even though I have priority boarding. We also have uh, one ship for Royal Caribbean passing its sea trials. We have another ship that is also from Royal Caribbean who is now going after that Orlando short cruise market. And I think, I think they have a real shot at taking that over. First off, I want to put out my condolences to friends and family of the people lost in the submersible on that Titanic tour. It, uh, I, I knew a little bit yesterday when I heard that they had found debris near the wreckage and that's all we had understood is that there was debris and they were tracking it and finding out. Uh, once you find debris in a submersible, uh, that's, that's usually the end of the story, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, uh, that is, that is one of my, one of my horrific thoughts in my head is being claustrophobic and trapped like in a cave or something like that. Right. It, it's just, that's terrifying to me. And I, I have complete condolences and everything to the friends and family of that, that, is um, you know one of those once in a lifetime experiences that unfortunately just did not go well. Carnival had to clarify and will also clarify to their port staff who are working at their home ports because a lot of people out of Galveston where three of the Royal Caribbean cruise ships are, are stationed right now are reporting that they are being told that they have to go to the back of the regular line even though their boarding pass says priority. Now the way priority is supposed to work, you can get it a, a couple ways. You can reach that certain status with their loyalty program like Platinum that will give you priority boarding when you're booking. Just like when you're a super elite with Air Canada, you get priority boarding no matter where you're sitting on the plane. However, uh, you can also get it by paying for the faster to the fun. A certain limited amount of faster to the fun, people can pay for that and get priority embarkation, disembarkation, and some other perks that you actually pay for. Well, in Galveston, people were showing up with their priority boarding and they were being told, no, nope, you, you got to go to the back of the line. Carnival has clarified and said, no, that's not supposed to happen. People are supposed to show up at their reported time. So when you click that you're supposed to show up at one o'clock, you don't show up at 11. You show up at one o'clock. However, if you have priority boarding, you are allowed to show up at any time once boarding starts. So if boarding starts at 10 o'clock, you have that window from 10 o'clock till closing of boarding, say at four o'clock. You show up and there's a priority line. Every home port should have a priority line. However, they not always the easiest to spot. They can be hidden, they can be around the corner in some cruise ports. However, not everybody working at those ports knows where the priority line is or even how it's supposed to work. Now, Carnival says they will be discussing this with all of their home ports to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future. So yeah, the people saying in the priority lines that you're not, you're gonna lose it now, they're saying, no, you won't. There was just some misunderstanding at the home ports and they're gonna fix that up. Some good news from Royal Caribbean, the icon of the seas has passed the first sea trials with flying colors. Now this one wasn't a real stressful test. That one will come later this year where they put that cruise ship through like full speed tests for a certain amount of hours, full turns at full speeds, et cetera, et cetera, emergency stops. They'll put it through the ringers. But from all accounts, the first test that went through, the ship passed with flying colors, which means it's still on target 
to meet its inaugural launch date. That is good news for Royal Caribbean. Some other news that's coming out, well, uh, I'll go into this in a little more detail in another video, but they have announced the brand new Utopia of the Seas uh, coming to uh, Florida. It's the new and last Oasis-class cruise ship. It will be the largest Oasis-class cruise ship out there. They always go a half a foot or a foot larger than the previous one, just to say that they are bigger. However, the Icon will still be the largest cruise ship in the world, and it launches before Utopia. So, uh, it, it, it doesn't get that distinction, but it does have some changes coming that the other Oasis-class ships don't have. So, I'll go over a, a more detailed video on that. But here's the thing, they decided they're going to home port the uh, Utopia of the Seas in Florida, Central Florida. And the big change is that they're going after the short cruises, those three day, four day cruises. And a lot of people are saying, wow, a big ship like that going after only three and four day cruises. But if you think, there are a ton of people in Florida, and especially the central Florida area, that just want to go away for a few days uh, or a weekend. And the seven-day cruise, they can't get away for. But they can drive to the cruise port and jump on a three- or a four-day cruise. Also, people can now pair, because it's located in central Florida, with Universal Studios trip or a Disney trip and combine it with a three or four day cruise as well. It's just a half hour down the road, 45 minutes. It makes it a very combinable offer when you're looking to have a two week trip. You can go for five days here, three days, four days there. It does work. And not only that, when you're going on a three and four day cruise, a lot of people aren't looking for the quiet cruise that's just like you're just going out and you're sailing there might be a show at night but then you're just relaxing by the pool deck the next day you might go to the private island but you know maybe not even get off you, you not too many people are doing that a lot of them look for stuff to do on the ship because it's such a short cruise you want as many activities on that cruise as possible especially if you're new to cruising and you're just saying hey i wonder what a cruise ship has to offer well, jumping on an Oasis-class cruise ship for three days, and then at the end of the three days going, we did hardly any of the stuff available. We got to see one Broadway show, and we went and did the surf simulator, and we went to the comedy club, and then our three days was up. We still have the aqua show, the ice skating show, the sports court. We have so many things we didn't do. This, and what do you guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go back. And then uh, not only that, you know, you get that younger crowd now that are looking for activities as well as just the getaway. So I think they have uh, pretty much thought this through and I think they're gonna be pretty successful. It might even take away a lot of the short cruise business from the other cruise lines in that area just because this will now be an attraction like a theme park into itself. Now sailing out of central Florida. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a pretty smart idea. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think? Do you think that was a, a good shrewd move? Myself, I'm not gonna do a three day cruise or a four day cruise normally. It has to be something very special or tied into something else. But I can see if I'm anywhere within driving distance of eight hours, that might be a huge, easy idea. Let me know in the comments down below. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want we'll to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.